is Kaz, and this is a special episode of Let's Play Let's Play Sonic 2006 2012. We'll begin in three, two, one. Play. Swing. Fur flies into Shadow's face before a gut crashing kick sends him reeling off. Sonic smirks. And here comes another swing. This misses completely. There he is, Shadow. Wrapped up and spinning fast, he razors into his opponent and digs him into the ground. Unwrapped below. With the other down, this ebony hedgehog uncurls and fist planted on Sonic's head rams Sonic into the earth. Kick. Out comes Shadow, trailed by strands of flying debris and dust, and look alive. It's Sonic streaking for him as well. But aha, Shadow's hand is open and inviting. Pools of energy well up, condensing into a tight orb that glimmers with golden electricity. Sonic splashes face first into this pool, bringing his arm behind his back in recoil, Shadow throws Sonic's face caught in tight in his grip. Yeah, a Chow's spear to the face blasts the Azure Hedgehog deep into the crust with a crash shooting a mile into the atmosphere. Is Shadow victorious? Crush. No chance for Shadow to become comfortable when an a, a elephantine boulder crunches the ground he stood on. Never mind that. It has already snapped in half. More of these meteors are screaming for him. Two fingers carving the earth. Sonic races quick enough to summon a vortex from his wave, but Shadow isn't worried about this. The ground, however, the splash from the cutting forms a mound in the center. And as your haze still whirring about him, Sonic scoops up this mound and Shadow's been blinded. The doppelganger brushing mud out of his eyes, Sonic rams his body into the side of a wall, himself protected by the razor ball motion of his body. The side of this man-made crag explodes, sending Sonic near unlimited ammo. You idiot. Eyes locked, Shadow raises Shit. his body up and, with a growl, shouts. Do I need to do this again? Hand ready, fingers curled, and body stable, bolts converge into a convoluted mass in the torn palm of his hand. Chows. And tips of his shoes hit the ground. He bolts forward for Sonic. He vaults, thrusts his palm to the ground, and... Spear! With a mighty blast, the entire floor of the ruins crunches together and breaks apart. Had Sonic been moving any faster, he'd have crashed into one of the jutting slates of rock. He is crushed inside. A Chow's control and quick tornado kick does him, oh, how bloody that strike was. Sonic is down, prone in the earth. Hey Shadow, next time try hurting. His brow is stooped and angry, but his smirk is brimming confidence without mugging one for it. Swoosh. They attack 20 strikes at once, with each impact smashing holes in the world. But Sonic gains the upper hand. Shadow looks left and strike. Pain surges through his face. Shadow skids, then rushes forward, relaxing his jowls and jaw. Sonic smirks again, brow lowering, and rolls into a ball. Vaulting his feet in the ground, Shadow stops short and uses inertia to jump, mimicking Sonic's maneuver as he comes down. The blue hedgehog is too far ahead of him, and it fails. When the tips of his jet shoes touch the sand, he zips forward, sand jetting meters into the red air. Shadow's reflexes save him, for Sonic was inches from a headlock. Fingers and fists lock. The two clash and fly backwards, throwing dust and sparks. Shadow backflips and sticks a landing, 
Sonic is thrown into a broken window and doesn't emerge. It hits Shadow. This is to Sonic's advantage. He charges for the wall, but Sonic breaks through with a dust-filled crash, ramming him back elbow first. Shadow shouts in surprise at Sonic's sudden strike. They collide into a parallel wall. Sonic somersaults backwards and skids on his knee as dust rushes into the anthro. He stands up, grinning with pleasure as the dust cloud clears. Shadow is stuck, embedded in the burned wall. The cracked paint on the wall scratches the skin beneath his fur. Sonic, you chose a bad day to mess with me. Shadow contracts every muscle in his body, breaking free, damaging the wall further. Before gravity can act, he streaks for Sonic. Sonic attempts to block him, but an elbow jab to the back sends Sonic curling face first into the ground. Jets of sand spring up into the air, thrown by the force of impact. Inside the new crater, Sonic rises to his feet. Sand trickles on him, but his shower lasts only a moment. Not bad. Not bad at all. A kick, streaks of cyan breaking off with it, crushes Shadow's chest, launching him through a dirty silver beam. The massive beam bends, conforming to Shadow's shape. It winds as it strains near its breaking point. Shadow regains balance only long enough to see Sonic speeding for him, whirring as a sharp ball. This time, Shadow catches him. The friction between them spits electricity and throws waves of sparks. The I-beam snaps. The sparks singing his face. Shadow is sent back dozens of meters. These meters result in a crash through the walls, but he is able to slow Sonic's advance to a crawl. The pressure between them builds exponentially. He grits his teeth, looking desperately for an opening. Sonic hits the ground with a spinning slide kick, and Shadow is down. Hands hit the ground first, then Shadow leaps back to his feet, snorting dust from the crash before being passively sucked in a new direction. Around and around goes a blur of azure, velocity quick quickening until there is a cerulean vortex. Shadow begins in the opposite direction. Dog slow on his first and second, his momentum increases with each revolution. The force of the twister crushes against him like a multi-ton wall, but soon enough, their tornadoes are of equal strength. The maelstrom unwinds, and the two hedgehogs are thrown back. The I-beam crashes. Shadow scowls as his jet shoes shatter the ground like glass and allows air to fill his lungs with deep and heavy breaths. Sonic makes no attempt to do the same, instead opting to rest his wrists on his hips and stick his tongue out at Shadow. This can't be Sonic. There's no explanation for any of this. No, this isn't right. Its skills are the exact same level as his, but this, this hedgehog is too strong to be Sonic. There's no chance that clown could have increased his strength so exponentially in the course of four months. No matter, Sonic or not, he chose to mess with the bull. Shadow stands erect, hands clenched into fists, one arm rubbing blood off of his lips. Stars of red energy emanate from his fists, becoming a smoke-like aura. The smoke rolls up his arms, then explodes around his body. Sonic grins. K -ch Chow's blog. Seconds before completing the attack, he's elbowed in the gut. A fountain of blood shoots from his mouth. Shadow collapses to his knees, but now he rises again. I'm not going to fall that easy, pow, a headbutt to the back. Shadow plants his foot in the ground and 180s, bam, an elbow to the mouth. 
He staggers back, nearly tripping to the ground, but able to bring his upper body forward enough. Sonic has bam, bam, bam. Two explosive hooks to the gut, one to the face. Left, right, and left. Sonic runs into the shaking shadow and jumps onto his face, both feet planted on his muzzle. As Shadow attempts to throw him off, he is rush-kicked in the face 400 times by Sonic as he literally runs on the Black Hedgehog's face. With one last mighty blow, Shadow is then thrown clear out of the dilapidated structure by a face-busting flying tornado kick. Already broken down, the command center partially collapses in on itself as crusty debris is strewn across the island and into the sea. Boog erg ak. Shadow takes increasingly br brutal blows to his body. Sonic comes in and knees him in the gut. Instantly, he wraps into a ball, bounces back, and then bounces forward. He smacks across Shadow's face, throwing the beaten hedgehog back. Shadow lets out a pain cry. Scratches running across his face, muzzle bloodied and bruised, and eyelids beginning to droop in fatigue. Shadow stumbles to stay on his feet, then makes a light speed dash towards Sonic. The opposing hedgehog is pushed back by a spinning kick. He rubs his mouth and takes three steps towards the maddened hedgehog before being launched into a sod house. Here it explodes in a debris-filled blast as he makes impact. All Sonic had heard were the frantic words, Chow's spear, laying on his back among the straw, wood, and grass. Sonic jumps to his feet, never once putting his hands on the ground. There's his grin. As Shadow blows in through smoke for a third strike, Sonic catches the fist with his forearm, ducks under Shadow's arm, and drives his own fist into his opponent's gut. A burst of spit shoots from the Ebony Hedgehog's mouth as his irises temporarily fade. Shadow clutches his flattened stomach. He struggles to stay on his feet, but gives in to the numbness invading his legs and falls to his knees. Blood and saliva seeps through his teeth and drips off his chin as he fights to catch a single breath, a single molecule of air. The pain racks him, and no attempt to, st to stand to succeeds. Moaning in agony, he falls to the side and rolls prone. Lightning strikes above their heads. A donut-shaped figure of tall, cumulonimbus clouds has moved into the area if not covering even a fourth of the picturesque dusk sky. With it comes the high winds. Wretched is this sardonic spectator of a backdrop in both its true nature and what truth lies behind its chows. Yes. Yeah, well, Mega Man Charcoal can eat a bag of dicks because I do have a Betamax player. He seems pretty insistent. And there we have it. I and guess something else like has happened. Says, um, they appear to be. Save the world from the future and oh boy. Also a time travel. Wait, he's playing as a different hedgehog fast. now. I'm gonna. There's. They had, they had asked for the fan fiction, so I'm going to I'm going to read a, a different a more different fan fiction that's about the posse and then I think that will be that for my contribution. But we'll get we'll get to that in a minute. I don't think I'm done with the fan fiction either. I have a fantastical imagining that because I'm obligated to do this, the rest of them will be obligated to watch me do this. So it's a kind of uh, it's a kind of Rochambeau, if you will. Ignore those 
choose to disagree. Is it, why do you gotta be such a negative? Oh wait, his power just like comes back. Like the others have to beat up enemies to get power, but his power just like just happens. Yeah. Okay. Oh, and does Shadow like actually lose a life when he falls into a pit that way? Why isn't he helping? He's just kind of following helplessly. It, it can with Wait, discussion we and done this Well, yeah, so not arbitrary. Hasn't this stick been done in an LP of four? Yes. Maybe. Who cares? Who cares? Okay. We've got gigaparts. You know, you yeah. have homing attack to everything. Homing attack. This is an okay mechanic, I guess. Oh, no, they're talking about the honey mustard! Ooh, it gets my gears. It grinds my get. Made of owls. I'm full of owls. He's gonna need an owl back to me. What is with the screaming? See what you get. Yeah. Okay. Now it's time for the. It's time for the payback. It's time for the other thingo. So yeah. I'm I'm just gonna go and, and read the other thing. I love game lag, especially when you have eight processors and no excuse. <laughs> oh no. This is like such a terribly encoded havoc physics in game. In the middle of the town of New York, oh, the afternoon the sun engine. was shining. While it was shining, it was clouded in nicer. dark shrouds That's of many good. clouds, yeah, taking down. away the light into but a shady sure. darkness. At least, that's what it is through a person's eyes. Today, it was just another regular Friday afternoon. For this person is just another nightmare. A nightmare that may haunt his dreams forever, or a nightmare that will only last a few hours. It's a nightmare nonetheless. The person was awoken at noon to the sound of his cell phone ringing. He was taking a nap from all the work and learning he had gone through for the past week and decided to crash on the couch, leaving all of the hard work done in the past. The person got up from his couch and reached for his cell phone on the table in front of him. He mumbled a very low-toned, hello, in a questioning manner. All he got on the other end was a familiar voice, a friend's even. On the other line, his friend said, it's time. Get here uh, right now, before it gets late. Open, his friend hung up on him, and this person this knew that it was serious. Then he realized that he almost have forgotten about something he had to do for today. It wasn't just another hangout with some friends or something similar. He realized that it was supposed to be an important day today. He got off from his couch, grabbed his keys and wallets from the table, and took his jacket on the way out. On his way to his car, along the long drive to his friend's apartment, his mind was racing back and forth as he goes on to think about today. On one part, he was angry that he had almost forgotten something important that he had to do. The other part is that he's trying to remember what was he going to do for today. He knew it wasn't one of his friend's birthdays today. He knew that all of them didn't have any extra work to do that didn't need any help on. After going through many other theories and getting to the apartment's parking lot, he finally realized what he was going to do for today. He muttered a very low, ah, shit, as he put the car in park and took the keys out of the ignition. He got out his cell phone to call his friend again, to tell him that he's right at the parking lot. He got nothing back but a quick, okay, which probably means that his friend does not want to get this over with. This person does as well. He entered the apartment building and climbed up the stairs to the third floor. He walked up to his friend's door and knocked on it a few times. 
The tension was getting tense as the doorknob was slowly being turned and the door was open. He saw his friend from the other side peeking his head out of the opened area of the door. Did you bring it? His friend said in a somewhat cheerful manner. The person didn't know what his friend was talking about, so he shook his head. What do you mean, no? You're the one who rented it, his friend said. The person put his hand his jacket's pocket, though he felt something in there. He took it out and saw a copy of Sonic and the Secret Rings on his hand from Redbox. His friend just rolled his eyes. Come on, I know it's terrible, but hiding it isn't going to make it better. Come on in, we're almost ready. The person walked into his friend's apartment room. He saw a TV on, with the first Castlevania game being played by one of his friends, along with being watched by another friend of his. The friend playing Castlevania is just at the third level, and kept on bragging that he didn't even get hit by any of the ravens, even though the other friend watching is calling them owls. The person took off his jacket and threw it on a chair nearby, and putting the game case on a table. The other two friends noticed that this person just came into the room with a brand new game to play with. Oh hey Pokey Captain, the friend watching Castlevania said. It took you a while to get here. Did you take another nap? Yeah, I had a ton of work finished and just decided to crash on the couch. Almost forgotten I had to do this abomination today, Pokey Captain said as he was getting himself a glass of water. So what's new with you, Medibot? The person playing Castlevania paused the game and stared to talk to Pokey Captain. Well, nothing's really new. We're just waiting for you to get ready. Kung Fu Jesus already set up everything on the Wii so we could record. Medibot took a look at the person playing the game and said, Kaz is saying that so he wouldn't go through Castlevania's hard mode without dying. Kaz looked back at Medibot. Well, what else are we going to do while we wait for Pokecap? Play Mario Party again? We knew how much fun we had there, Kaz said, who was about to throw his controller at poor Medibot. Kung Fu Jesus walked to the two fighting with the Sonic game in hand. I'm not sure we're going to have any fun for today. We usually know how much torture we go through with this blue guy on this disc, uh, well, Kung Fu Jesus said wait, in a deadpan so mood. Pokey Captain sat on a chair that was next to the couch the where Medibot and Kaz was sitting on. Yeah, doesn't that game have some sort of party multiplayer or something, Pokey Captain said after taking a sip from his water. Well, looks like we're going to have some bonus content once we get done with the game itself, Medibot stated. Jesus just shook his head as he remembers the horrors of all the eight Mario Party games along with Sonic Shuffle. Maybe we'll just play the game itself before we think about it. I'm not ready getting my ass handed by you again. Kung Fu Jesus said as he was taking the game out of the case and putting it in the Nintendo machine. He got on his computer chair to set up the recording software on the television with the capture card, along with recording the microphone for the commentary. Everything was recording and was working fine, and gave Pokey Captain the okay to get ready to play the game. Pokey Captain picked up the Wiimote and talked into the microphone. Hello everyone, this is Pokey Captain. This is Medibot. I am Kung Fu Jesus, and my name is Kaz, and welcome to Let's Play Sonic and the Secret Rings. Pokey. Sometimes it channels it in ways you don't expect. Yeah. So because magic is electricity. Or what? what? Are we done with how to boss or what? Can't be. I have yeah, because you, you used your, your quest item to seal the boss. That you didn't have to defeat. Yeah. You're back sooner than I expected. <laughs> Once again, this whole notion of time. time travel. Apparently not. Oh, where's the key? What did you buy ten years ago? I need you to access GUN's database. It's called GUN, you idiot. GUN. Not as a spell oh, GUN. GUN database. <laughs> sure. But you have an SD 
in my question. I found the means to seal Metropolis. With the scepter of darkness? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so we 